we don't get to see much of the Stormlands in Game of Thrones. And with all those book moments cut from the show, a lot of characters were scrapped too. There isn't a single Storm character that made it to the screen, some having pretty major moments in the story. The most prominent of the named five so far being Edric Storm. Robert Baratheon's only acknowledged bastard child out of his 18. Edric was only given the name Storm because his mother was also a noble. It would be a lot more troublesome to dishonor her like you would with the other commoners. Though these surnames don't really give these overlooked children much of an advantage in life, compared to their true-born siblings with house surnames like Baratheon. In a lot of situations, they're essentially commoners, even if acknowledged. But I'll get into Edric Storm and his weird origin story in a bit. I'm going to go further back in the lore first to talk about his and his father's ancestor, Ronard Storm. Ronard is only mentioned in the supplementary book, The Wall of Ice and Fire. So even if you've read the entire series, this will be an unfamiliar name. No exact timestamp was given that will inform us on the era he lived, but thousands of years in the past is hinted. Back then, the Stormlands, which this bastard identifying surname stems from, was a very different place. The Targaryens curved out a large portion of its land to create a new kingdom for themselves when they conquered this continent 300 years back. But even thousands of years in the past, smaller kings were constantly at war to take some land and power away from the Stormlands. And the kings here were also doing the same. The rulers here had the impenetrable castle called Storm's End that kept them safe from would-be conquerors and the horrible weather coming out from the sea. But all the other locations weren't defended as well. This kept the kings here, House Durandin, always at war with neighboring kingdoms. You can see the storm theme being very prominent here. House Durandin ruled over the Stormlands since ancient times, and during Ronard Storm's era, their rule only extended just outside their castle. His half-brother, King Morden Durandin II, clearly wasn't the most competent leader, but he did name his bastard brother Ronard a Storm's End Castellan. This position is given to capable people, usually of high birth, to look after and defend a castle while the ruling lord or king is away. And Ronard was as capable as Castellans get. The Durandins, like Baratheons that would come after them, were known for their strength in battle, as Ronard is described as a fearsome warrior. He ended the dwindling of his house's power, gaining everyone's respect to the point where he became the ruler of the Stormlands in all but name. And within five years of doing all the heavy lifting, he did get the name of Storm King easily usurping the throne from his half-brother Morden. There would be more insult to injury with Morden being so weak and Ronard looked at as a hero. Former King Morden's sister came King Ronard Storm's wife and queen, which kind of makes her Ronard's sister as well. This kind of thing doesn't even shock me anymore, with so much incest in the story. Morden's wife was the one who placed her husband's crown on Ronard's head, and rumored to later be one of his paramours. Morden wasn't seen as a threat that needed to be permanently put down, so just tossed the harmless guy into a confined cell in the tower. To be usurped and allowed to be kept alive in your own former castle is an insane series of events. Any other king with even the smallest amount of support would retaliate with a full-blown civil war. During King Ronard's 30-year-long reign, countless battles were fought to defend the Stormlands and regain lost land. Whether it was other kings or rebelling bannermen, Ronard crushed every one of them. And due to his lustful personality, he thought it would be appropriate to claim a daughter from every enemy that bent the knee. You know where this is going. Ronard was a bigger bastard maker than his descendant Robert. Despite collecting 23 wives over his lifetime, he just kept on making babies out of wedlock. Out of 99 sons and an unknown amount of daughters, most were bastards. Doesn't seem like many were officially acknowledged by the Storm King, because after thousands of years, a whole bunch of small folk living in the much smaller Stormlands claim to have royal blood tracing from Ronard Storm. The story of how House Durandin was wiped out in current times and replaced by the Baratheons is pretty long, and I'm sure most of you have probably heard it. But just in case you haven't, the TLDR is a Targaryen bastard named Oris Baratheon killed the last Storm King 300 years back during the Targaryen conquest and he took a Durandin's daughter as his wife, just like how her ancestor used to do things. House Baratheon is part Targaryen and Durandin in its origins. Through this line, we get back to our young friend Edric Storm, who's in the current story along with the rest of the characters with this label. Edric's mother is the Lady Delana Florent. And King Robert came across this noblewoman during his younger brother Stannis' wedding to the Lady Selyse Florent. 
House Florian hails from the Reach and is a fairly prominent family from this rich kingdom. What Delena did during her cousin Selyse's wedding night is considered extremely taboo for a noblewoman, even if Robert was a king. They took it way too far by doing the deed in Stannis' own bed. Stannis being the character that he is, obviously didn't appreciate this but kept his mouth shut. The Baratheon brothers never did like each other much, but Stannis did serve Robert dutifully as his Lord of Dragonstone and Master of Ships. Stannis instead took out his displeasure on the newborn baby Edric. Lady Delena Florent was quickly married off to one of her father's knights after she was deflowered, and for some reason the bastard Edric ended up in Dragonstone with Stannis. Maybe Delena stayed back on this island after the wedding to keep her cousin company while she was adjusting to her new home, but it is a little confusing Delena did not take her new child with her back to the Reach, where she would spend her days with her new husband. Maybe this new man didn't want a bastard around as a reminder of Robert. Pretty common thing you see in this world, like in the case with Catelyn Stark and Jon Snow. But Stannis wanted nothing to do with the newborn either. Edric was tossed over to Robert and Stannis' younger brother Renly, the youngest of the Baratheon bros. Renly became the lord of Storm's End after Robert usurped the throne away from the Targaryens. So being fostered by someone with Renly's status was more than anything a bastard in this world could hope for. But Renly didn't pay much attention to the kid. Yeah, it's pretty sad, but he lived a very easy and privileged life in Storm's End, even without his parents' love or attention. Since Renly spent most of his adult life in King's Landing as King Robert's Master of Laws, raising little Edric fell into the hands of Renly's castellan of Storm's End named Courtney Penrose, a badass character in his own right. Instead of creating this Edric Storm character for Game of Thrones, the writers instead combined his story arc with Gendry, one of Robert's other bastards. That whole Melisandre taking King's Blood moment happened to Edric in the books. When Stannis, Melisandre, and Davos consider how to use his own nephew for their cause, Davos fears what Melisandre will do with him after seeing all the sacrifices being made to her Lord of Light. In the third book, they say, Did the boy charm you? He has that gift. He got it from his father, with the blood. He knows he is a king's son, but chooses to forget that he is a bastard born, and he worships Robert, as Renly did when he was young. My royal brother played the fond father on his visits to Storm's End, and there were gifts. Swords and ponies and fur and cloaks. The eunuchs work, every one. The boy would write the Red Keep, full of thanks, and Robert would laugh and ask Varys what he'd sent this year. Renly was no better. He left the boy's upbringing to castellans and maesters, and every one fell victim to his charm. Penrose chose to die rather than give him up. The king ground his teeth together. It still angers me. How could he think I would hurt the boy? A little sprinkle of tragic backstory added in with the whole gifts being sent by Varys to make Robert not appear to be a deadbeat father that he was. But like Gendry, Edric was secretly shipped away by Davos to Essos in order to save him from Melisandre's fires, and he has yet to return from the island lease. The bastard half-brothers, Edric and Gendry, do share some similarities so you can understand why Game of Thrones simplified things the way they did. Some of the glaring differences comes from their upbringing. They may have both inherited that intense stubbornness, but the cozy lifestyle added a layer of pride to Edric, where Gendry's humbler childhood, where he was oblivious of the Baratheon connection, formed a sadder and more frustrated youth. Gendry was never acknowledged, and shockingly almost killed as a child by Robert when he went drunkenly horse riding through the streets of King's Landing. I don't think anyone has talked about Castellan as much as this has been discussed in this video, but another current character in the story with the name Storm is the Castellan of Dragonstone, Sir Rollin Storm, the bastard of Night Song. His half-brother is the ruling lord of House Karen in the Stormlands, and his other half-brother was actually betrothed to Brianna Tarth before his death. While Stannis is out on his campaign, Rollin Storm is charged with mining obsidian or dragonglass to fight back against the White Walkers. His work is interrupted when the Lannisters and Tyrells try and take this castle away from Stannis while it's lightly garrisoned. Loras Tyrell leads an army that successfully storms the castle, after Roland refused him of single combat to prevent the bloodshed. Loras' victory came at a high cost. Many lives were lost, and now Loras himself is believed to be slowly dying from his injuries. There's no word of Roland's well-being, however. There's brief mention of a character named Cedric Storm, the bastard of Bronsky in the third book, when Jaime Lannister is reading through his predecessor, Sir Barristan Selmy's accomplishments before being appointed to Lord Commander of the Kingsguard. 
Cedric is one of many men to be defeated by Barristan, but all we know is that he defeated him. Not clear if that means in real battle or attorney. It could be either one, really, with how active in both areas Barristan has been. The last known Storm is a young character in the current story, named Ronald Storm. A lot of similar names going on here, I know. From the brief moments we get with him, it seems like his father, the leader of House Cunnington, has treated him well, allowing him to have a place in the castle. Ronald's luck has been running out by the time he's introduced in the fifth book, because one of his previously exiled relatives has taken their castle back, leaving Ronald a hostage. He's still being treated gently, but still shows his captors this fierce attitude of his, fitting for the name Storm. He tries to bite one of the guards, and tells his captor that his father will return to kill him. But overall, a very minor character, nowhere near as important as Edric Storm. So those are the five overlooked characters from an overlooked kingdom. And that closes this chapter of what somehow turned into a large series of videos. The Storms haven't had it as bad as some of the others. And they get the added bonus of the coolest bastard label. Way cooler than rivers or sand. I'll see you soon with something else to talk about. Thanks for watching.